Dan Lou Brutus again backstage at Rockfest in Cadant, Wisconsin. This gentleman hailing from the beautiful city of San Diego, California, a sailing capital, which is why I'm wearing this hat. Look at me. I am the captain now. I am the captain. captain. Marcos Curiel from POD. Good to see you again. How you been? What's up, my brother? How are you? I'm doing good. Now, uh, we were beginning by talking about uh, favorite Metallica songs. We were, we were just sort of buzzing about that. Your favorite is Bread Fan. Why yes. is that? You know what? It's one of those songs that kind of, when I heard it, the first time I heard it, it just kind of grabbed me. And then when I found out it wasn't something that they had released to the general public, like for everyone to hear till later, it mm. was kind of like a B-side or whatever. I was like, this song's badass. I, I don't know why they haven't released this. You know, when I finally heard it, I was like, this is my favorite song. And it's been one of my favorite songs ever since I heard it. Kind of has that same vibe of Master of Puppets where it's this longer song with this melodic guitar breakdown. And I like that kind of stuff, so. And there are so many other great things on the, uh, you know, the Garage Days and the Garage Inc. Uh, you know, So What is just one of my favorite covers. It's just the nastiest thing <laughs> ever written. Uh, but Free Speech for the Dumb. Mm -hmm. uh, the Misfits stuff, that was one of the other great things about Metallica, the fact that there's that injection of punk rock in a lot of that stuff, too, that Motorhead had it and, uh, and some of the other better bands, some of the thrashier bands had it. And you know what? A lot of people don't know that about my band, P.O.D., were definitely influenced by a lot of hardcore and a lot of punk rock also. Well, and again, be, be, because a lot of those bands, on sort of a street level, it was a, a, a very honest, truth-telling sort of music, and it was very raw, so that, that's why I think they always, those genres played well together, even though they seemed rather mm -hmm. distant from one another. Well, we're a true garage band, too, P.O.D. You know, a lot of people don't know that. We started in, in Wove, the drummer's garage, you know. and he started on his dad's drum kit, and I used to bring my little Gorilla amp and my Memphis Strat, you know, copy, and we tried to be Metallica. <laughs> 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 and here we are doing our thing, doing our Southtown street version around the world, and we're grateful to be here, man. Yeah, I'm so happy to see you here. You had a great set today. You had a great set. You were here last time, I think, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a ton of fun. What was it like? Uh, you you mentioned these early days. San Diego is a major town, but mm -hmm. in some respects, it is uh, thousands of miles away from Los Angeles, which isn't too far to, to the north. Tell me about those early days and trying to make something happen on your own ground. Um, well, I mean, you just kind of have. We kind of had to just do it on our own, just like in anything else. You don't make. Everyone becomes a believer once there's success. Mm. When you're struggling, everyone's like, no, no. No, and we were just like, yes, yes, yes. Let's play this kegger. Uh, let's play the YMCA. Let's do the Battle of the Bands. Let's uh, let's let's cram into a little van and and let's go play some shows elsewhere. And uh, you know, it was always difficult, especially the type of music that we were doing, trying to break into the LA scene at the time, because you know, a band from San Diego. What is this rap? What is this punk? Like it was a, you know, especially on the strip. So. We got our first gig at the Whiskey, and we lost our original bass player, and then we were able to get Trey to fill in because he was playing in a funk band with Wolves' uncle, uncle's band, and that's kind of it, man. We just like were like, dude, you want to jam? Let's jam, and we started jamming, and we played the Whiskey, and many years later, we got signed at the Whiskey. Atlantic signed us there at the Beanery. We, we, we played a show at the Whiskey and then walked down to the Beanery, had dinner, and got signed. Craig Kalman signed us. Atlantic Records. Did you physically sign there at the table? No, that we, we, we thought that would be the put case. That, put that, that in know. the movie when they make exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. man. We shook hands and said, welcome to Atlantic Records. Our attorneys had been talking. And then after that, I kept my job for about a year and a half. And all my friends, I thought you were signed. I go, it's not done yet. We're negotiating nonstop for the past year and a half. After a while, my friends were like, oh, he's bullshitting, man. He, he didn't get signed. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. I was like, I got signed. Trust me. And then eventually they saw everything come out. MTV and the videos and yeah, so here we are. We're still doing it 27 years later. You know, you you touched on it a little bit. One of the great things about POD is the fact that there's a, a little bit of music from here and a little bit of music from there, and and it's definitely a a mix up of uh, uh, genres. But again, not everybody likes to have their genres mixed up, particularly right. club owners. And you mentioned the strips specifically. Well, I mean, I, I think 
you'll still get a lot of people that are very hesitant. Oh, what is this rap stuff? Well, where we grew up, we would go to a hardcore show or we would go to a punk rock show. They were they weren't mixed. They were segregated, and yeah. we would go to a, a garage show, straight edge show, or a hip hop show, and a scene started to grow in San Diego where the hardcore bands were mixing with rap. And we're like, we're from the neighborhood. We're like, dude, I like rap. I like Run DMC. I like the Beastie Boys. But I also love this punk rock stuff and this yeah. metal stuff. So we were like, why don't we do our version of it? <laughs> and I used to sing. Originally, we were in a thrash metal band. And me and Wov, you know, we started P.O.D. We were in a band called Eskatos. And it was like- Say it again. What was your name? Eskatos. What is that? Eh, it was, at the time, it was the study of the end of the world. Eschatology. So we were- I was playing an Ironbird. That's some deep Beast. shit. <laughs> I was playing an Ironbird BC Rich, and I was also singing, but screaming, kind of doing the Sepultura Slayer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was on drums, and we had a friend on guitar. Well, we later were like going to these shows. We're like, dude, let's just let's get a rapper or someone who can rap, has that vibe. We love rap and that street vibe. You move over to just playing guitar and doing background screaming, and let's see what we get. Well, long behold, Sonny was doing a underground rap project in San Diego called Unlicensed Product. And Wub was like, hey, what, why don't we try our, my cousin out? And I'm like, he's super shy, man. He never says anything. Next thing you know, it was like our they're, first show. They're always the ones you have to watch, though. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because when I watched that Doors movie when, when uh, Jim Morrison wouldn't turn around, that was kind of Sonny on our first show ever yeah. at, uh, at a place called Soma in San Diego. He... I heard of that he, place. He yeah. had his back yeah. turned, and I want to say the, the the lyrics in his in his hand, and what was like, turn around, dude, turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and we were playing the dungeon, and if you get a hundred people, you get to go up top to the big stage at a different gig, a different time, and open for a big band. And our first band that we opened for was Green Day, and Green Day Honestly was God. this was before they this was when they were on Lookout Records. Yeah, it was the Kerplunk days. I yeah. Think, right? yeah, and. Uh, that's it, man. We just started growing from there, and we've never stopped. Yeah. How were they, by the way? How was the gig? They were cool, man. They yeah. were really cool. They actually, the second time we played with them, they got signed by Warner Brothers. Yeah. It was early '90s, and I remember that A and R rep specifically saying that he loved our band but didn't understand our lyrics. So, imagine if we would have got signed then. That yeah. would have been way before the Rage Against the Machine. That would have been. It could have been. A, different for us yeah or we might not be a band we might have not been ready for you it you know, know. you yeah, never yeah, know, that, you know? That, that, you're here now and that's yeah, what counts exactly. well one last one last thing and i know we're talking a lot of histrionics but um was there anybody in san diego at that time that you guys could look to um as as a guiding light because i remember as a kid the bands i was familiar with from san diego were sort of like Cowpunk bands like Beat Farmers, mm -hmm. Rank and File, but I don't remember that there was any other sort of scene down there. Oh, there was in Chula Vista. There was a hardcore scene. There was bands like Unbroken, uh, uh, Impel, Amenity, a lot okay. of these straight edge hardcore bands. Forced yeah. Down, and we used to go to, and you know, they used to kind of mix in with the Orange County Revelation Records, right, and all that. So, and that's where Zach De La Roca came from, Raging Against sure, the Machine, yeah, yeah. Inside Out. So we would go to all those shows, and um, it kind of just inspired us to be like, man, we want we want to play shows, we want to play in front of people, and we had that hardcore mentality. Yeah. But we were very influenced by the Bad Brains, and you know, and we were like, you know, we want to do, yeah, we want to do our version of that, obviously, and write good songs and and inspire people with positive vibrations, man. Well, the latest is rocking with the best, which I think uh, actually. It's a nice encapsulation of what you guys do, and it's mm. got, uh, I think it encapsulates the, the message very well, too. Well, thank you, man. I mean, we feel really strongly about that song, and we're going to be definitely uh, playing that a lot more live, and we played it today. So, yeah. yeah. How'd it go over? Man, the weather was a little weird. Yeah. But we kicked ass. <laughs> you always kick ass. <laughs> if you're not kicking ass by now, you wouldn't be here, you know? <laughs> Fans don't take around this long. Tell me, do you like that? Like, Did you like that? Did the skipper like that? Uh, the, ahoy, mateys. <laughs> <laughs> it has permission to come aboard now. All right, man. But, uh, yeah, if, if you guys didn't know how to do it by now, you wouldn't be here anymore. And uh, one last thing, and, and I'm not sure how we get this on camera. Paul, maybe if you can bring it over. 
Oh. The, the best thing any kind of music or a musician can do is inspire other people and, and check out this painting. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, and you're not giving this to me, right? I don't get to take this on the plane because I'd hang that in my you, house. You can't you can't give a gift away, okay, a personal gift like that. This was given to me from a, a I'm gonna call him a friend, a fan, and uh, he hand painted this, and it's beautiful. I don't even know what to say, man. I'm just like, wow. And what's the artist's name? Where where is he or she from? He, he's from. I want to say he's from here. I'm not 100 percent Wisconsin where. area. Wisconsin yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. That's some neat stuff. Anything else you've ever gotten like that? Anything personal like that that really kind of was special? That's top, man. I've never gotten a, a, what would you call that, a portrait? Yeah. A portrait of, of myself from somebody. I think that's freaking awesome, dude. That's uh, that's pretty cool stuff. That's a that's a nice Wisconsin uh, souvenir for the it day. It is, man. Oh, no, I just need some cheese curds, and I'm good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I stayed away from the cheese curds so far. I know I'll weaken tonight. Other people worry about, like, you know, cocaine and whiskey. I'm man. like, oh, keep me off the cheese curds, dude. Oh, I got man. a problem. I'll be 45. All that stuff, those days are. Oh, no, me. that's, no. Black the, coffee and the music old ticker, is where it's at. When I see some of these old rock stars going big, I'm like, Dude, yeah. you're gonna watch, you're gonna end up dead, Son, man. Son, <laughs> you don't want to ride that. Oh, you're you're you're, t- you're tickers. I don't know, man. No judgments. I'm just saying, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some touring on the way, including some stuff with uh, Nonpoint. Yes, we uh, actually just did two two legs with them. Yeah. Um, and that was awesome. Those guys are great. Uh, we're about to do another leg in Europe because the first leg went so well. It's us and uh, with our good friends Alien Ant Farm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's always good to see you. Uh, congratulations on everything. Thank I you love so talking much, to you. man. And yeah. I'm sorry if we spo- spoke about it. I-, I didn't want to sound like crusty old punk rock hardcore guy. But, ah. uh, you know, you were there on the front lines for that stuff in Southern California, oh, which man. I never got near. I, I, you know, I'm wearing a punk rock shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah from ca- Canadian punk rock. Oh, yeah. I know all pro- very, propaganda. Yeah, yeah, very progressive. Good on stuff. On all fronts. <laughs> Marcos from POD, we are backstage at Rockfest in Cadott, Wisconsin.